Hello everyone, I'm Wendell Jones and welcome to this edition of the program, The Platform. On this program, we examine uh, national issues and today on our program, we are going to be talking about tourism in the Bahamas. The Ministry of Tourism uh, this year celebrated the 50th anniversary of the establishment of the Ministry of Tourism in 1964 when ministerial government came to the Bahamas. Well, the Bahamas has gone through uh, many director generals of tourism, indeed many ministers over the last 50 years, and the industry has changed uh, considerably. And so on this program today and on other programs, we are talking about 50 years of the Ministry of Tourism and uh, all that happened in those 50 years. Our guest on this program today is a former Director General of Tourism and uh, he is presently the Chief Executive Officer of the Tourism Development Corporation, Mr. David Johnson. Mr. Johnson, welcome to the program. Good to be here, Wando. Uh, nice to have you here today. You have been in tourism uh, in one way or the other for most of your, your working days, eh? Uh, I would say yes, most of my adult life. Oh, okay, correct. very yes. good. Um, because um, what I didn't mention is that one time you were general manager of Bahamas Air. That's correct. Yes. Uh, I was at Bahamas Air for about six years. Six years. Six years, yeah. And um, in your new position in the uh, Tourism Development Corporation, tell us uh, briefly what that is about. Yes. Um, tourism as a tool for economic development and a business uh, moves on the basis of development, that is, capacity. Uh, the Bahamas recognized um, in recent times that we've been flat. Uh, we were a leader in the tourism sector in the Caribbean. Uh, we were at something like 12,000 rooms uh, for accommodation for visitors in the early 70s, 71, 72 and over a million visitors arriving by air. At that time, places like Cancun, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, were less than one half our size. Over the next 30 years, we've seen those destinations increase their capacity to more than double, if not triple ours, and by extension, their business, their tourism count. Uh, that was fine when we didn't have a need to grow. Mm -hmm. But we know in the Bahamas now, our population is moving. We cannot live in a static industry. So the purpose of this corporation, somewhat same, similar to when the hotel corporation came into effect, is for the government to use some of the resources to, in a strategic way and tactical way, cause for tourism to grow, uh, to master plan it, to ensure it happens where it needs to happen and to have competitive tourism products. So this corporation and my charge is to focus on how do we develop a more competitive tourism product so that marketing works. Between 1964 and say the early 70s, uh, tourism in the Bahamas grew exponentially, you, you, you would say that? Oh, no question about it. Unlike any other destination, we, uh, we started modern tourism in the Caribbean, with the exception of Havana. Mm -hmm. So what, what, how, how did we uh, begin uh, and what attracted uh, tourists uh, to the Bahamas? Was it the decline of Cuba um, in the late 50s? Uh, we, we are talking about 1964 now, when the yes. Ministry of Tourism started. Yeah, there's a combination of things. There's no question the opportunity was created largely by Cuba's demise. Mm -hmm. But tourism in the Caribbean really started with cruise tourism. And there were two destinations that led the pack. Cruises left Miami, Havana, Nassau, Miami. We were twinned with Cuba from the outset. Mm. But when Cuba went through its revolution, a lot of U.S. Um, investors, we want to call them that, looked at a nearby spot like the Bahamas. So that created Grand Bahama. That created Freeport and Lucaya, hmm. which exceeded Nassau in his early days. Uh, what we had then was a spirit, almost a pioneering spirit. And we had business persons at the helm, okay? 
the chap who founded Modern Tourism, he was a businessman, Stop for Science. And he cut a deal. He cut deals to cause for the development of tourism in a very unbureaucratic manner. So it happened. Mm -hmm. There's a good part of that that we must remember. Today, business moves lightning fast. There's no bureaucratic means of winning today. Mm -hmm. So we should not lose sight of the fact that this is a competitive business and we need business acumen driving our thinking. It's interesting that you said that uh, because um, even though he was a businessman, uh, he left in uh, 1967, um, the Ministry of Tourism in January, but we still saw the increase in tourism uh, throughout the years, uh, up to the 1980s, you would say. Yes. Um, the Promotion of Tourism Act was an act of genius. Mm. Uh, it's very simple, but it was an enabler. Mm. And that hasn't changed today. That is what was created then. And it made the Ministry of Tourism, unlike any other agency of government, unique. Yes. In that the minister was empowered to do what is necessary without necessarily even referring to his colleagues to cause for tourism to grow. So t t the Ministry of Tourism became uh, a corporation onto itself, corporation sold. Embodied in the minister. Yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, so successive ministers were able to use that vehicle uh, to grow tourism as, as it, it did. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, what changed, of course, as tourism got bigger and um, the cabinet form of government took hold, uh, ministers constrained themselves, perhaps more than they had to, uh, by con consultation. But the fact is that act enabled the minister to act almost unilaterally in many areas in terms of once he has his budget, deploying that to get the results. You, um, in the Ministry of Tourism, also had a, you developed a professional staff. And I'd like for you to speak to that. Uh, the quality of individuals that were needed uh, for uh, the marketing, the uh, public relations of the Bahamas. Yes. Um, I was one among the early recruits uh, when I joined the Ministry of Tourism. We had a professional organization of uh, hardcore professionals. They were all different, but they came from the private sector, uh, from various airlines in the world, Pan Am, etc., etc. These were proven industry professionals. Uh, and we were trained um, by those persons and a program that Sir Clement Maynard um, inaugurated mm -hmm. to test the ability of Bahamians to adopt and to be effective in sales and marketing abroad. It was an experiment. Even Sir Clement was not certain that that experiment would work. So you couldn't uh, run the Ministry of Tourism and get the yields that you got with a kind of civil service mentality? Uh, no, I would say outright no. Uh, and, I, and, and when you say civil service mentality, when we talk about slow bureaucracy, right. we would be dead in the water. No. Mm -hmm. uh, it moves too quickly. Okay. Um, and the process uh, and the constraints would not enable us to, to convert. Now, when we were developing tourism in the Bahamas, uh, our neighbors in the south were uh, into agricultural pursuits. Um, they were able to uh, run a race with us, and perhaps they ran a very good race uh, looking at the successes of the Bahamas, eh? Well, that's what they did, precisely. I mean, there was a time when they had this, so much, this pride mm -hmm. that servitude, service was servitude. However, they soon found that the realities of economics, of the, uh, the crop they were trying to sell, they couldn't export them at profits. And, uh, and they looked to tourism as a, uh, as a means of really fueling their economy. And once uh, they saw that they could be competitive, they learned from the Bahamas, copied what we did, and deploy all the resources to catch up. And, um, and catch up they did. But um, even our competitors to the south of us, without exception, 
they look at the Bahamas' potential and say, if we had what the Bahamas had, our strength is we have so many islands and we have not scratched the surface in a real sense of developing our true potential. So if we were stock, I would say to the world, buy the Bahamas stock. But the earning potential is far greater in the Bahamas than anywhere else. Are we using that potential, though? Because um, if you look at uh, the Bahamas, the Bahamas mm -hmm. itself can be a region based on the number of islands that we have. And in terms of marketing tourism, we've only been pushing uh, New Providence, uh, Paradise Island, and Grand Bahama. Isn't that right? Yes. Uh, and, 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 the, and the reason we exist, one of the reasons I am where I am at, is because um, we have to move away from a master plan for tourism development that's driven by what investors' appetite might be. We should determine what are the objectives for the country, then go out and locate strategic partners that can help us do that, where and when we need it. That's what I do today. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, obje the paradigm, there's a paradigm shift. It's shifting very quickly. Very shift, uh, okay. And um, back in the 60s and 70s, um, we were looking, uh, we had a small population, a mu much smaller population, and uh, the needs uh, were not as they are today. No, it was not so competitive. We had a captive audience. We just kept the shop open, and we didn't look for customers. They came. There were a few stores on the street. Today, mm. we have them all around us, and we need to go and bring people into our stores and present products to them to sell. We really have to go out and market the destination. We said we were marketing before. We were servicing existing demand. Today, we have to stimulate demand. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? Uh, it's about determining the opportunities. First of all, we have to know our product and its potential. We have to know uh, what works for Meguana and who are the partners that can align themselves to a plan to develop tourism in Meguana where there's a fit and look at how that business model can generate profit for the investor returns for the community that is desirable returns and cause it to happen. Inducement, incentives, or simply facilitating. But it's all about a plan. It starts with a plan. Yeah. What is the difference between the product that we have in the Bahamas, uh, say, versus the product that you would find in uh, Jamaica, St. Lucia, uh, and other places such? It varies. Um, there are uh, marketplaces where there's a preference, a strong preference to be in English-speaking destinations in the Caribbean. So when that happens, so where do we go? There's Bahamas, Jamaica, Bermuda's too cool. And so uh, there are those dynamics where um, suppliers in the market would prefer and be more comfortable going to an English-speaking stable destination. There's sometimes a sense that I'm mean, not sure about that Spanish um, uh, arrangement. Two, there's proximity. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're flying from Toronto to Barbados, it's about seven hours, six hours. Mm -hmm. And you have five days, you don't want to do that. Uh, the Bahamas is three hours. So there's proximity, there's price, just the environment of the vacation. Um, there are persons who come to the Bahamas and go to the outer islands and, and would not want to be on Paradise Island. It's a very different customer. There are many variations. Um, the, uh, the Bahamas brand and the Bahamas reputation today is still seeing us up there compared to the others. The others are seeing us lower. They might have more, uh, more, more, more volume because they appeal to the middle and the lower end of the market and they have lower price points. But in terms of the perception of the brand quality, the Bahamas has a, still is perceived as high quality and first world. The number of visitors, for instance, uh, in the Dominican Republic, uh, they have far more rooms than we have uh, in the Bahamas. The product is different, you say? 
largely different. Dominican Republic, uh, you're dealing largely with very large hotels, um, thousand rooms and more. Hotels that are a destination within themselves. Uh, the guests generally stays within the confines of the hotel. They come for a week or two. They come on wide-bodied aircraft, they're transferred by buses, and they are captive. That doesn't do for the economy, mm -hmm. what our form of tourism does. Mm -hmm. But they have huge volumes. Uh, they have close to 60,000 rooms. We have less than 14, 14 and a half thousand rooms. Uh, they're in the neighborhood of 3.8 million visitors that stay over. We're around 1.5. Mm -hmm. But our yield is much higher, and our population enjoys still a much higher um, um, earning per capita than they do. Is it because our, uh, the, the, the cost uh, is higher in, in terms of the cost of the destination, cost of goods and services in the Bahamas being higher? Yes, we are demanding a premium, much higher cost for our rooms. Uh, our labor component is higher. Uh, persons in the Dominican Republic, generally speaking, the average intake per week is probably less than $70. In the Bahamas, that's nearer to what it is per day. So uh, we are a high-cost destination. Our power costs can still be higher. Labor costs is higher. Communication costs are higher. Um, but we're still managing to um, demand that premium with our pricing. But that is a, that is a threat to our long-term sustainability because as quality comes up, and they're working at quality, then price becomes an issue. If your quality doesn't measure up, um, um, it's, or someone is able to match your quality, but at a 40% lower price point, you have a business challenge. Let's take a break here on the program. And when we return, I'd like to continue to talk about the quality of our product and then take a look at the cruise industry. We take this break. We'll come right back.